with the 1209 submission of the Uyghurs. The way was open for Chinggis Khan to march over the Gobi Desert into the weakest kingdom of North China, the Shishia, known to the Mongols as the Tangut. Mongolian raids into the Tangut kingdom had already destabilized it. Crops destroyed, thousands of animals taken, all made worse by the murder of the Tangut king in 1206 by his cousin, the new king Xiangxiong. In early 1208, to appease the Mongols, Xiangxiong agreed to pay tribute to protect his kingdom, but stopped in 1209. Chinggis now had an excuse to declare a proper war on the Tangut. In April 1209, Chinggis Khan crossed the Gobi Desert, making for Wulahai, which the Mongols had briefly captured early 1208. Xiangxiong sent an army of 50,000 men under his nephew Li Shongxing and the general Kao Ling Pai to keep the Mongols from Wulahai. Skilled horsemen, spearmen, and infantry, the Tangut forces were not to be underestimated. In a brief skirmish, the Tangut beat the Mongols, but did not exploit this minor victory. Chinggis Khan reorientated his army and forced the Tangut into pitched battle, crushing them. Jiang Chong's nephew escaped, but General Li Shongxing was captured and executed. The Mongols then retook Wulahai. Marching south along the west bank of the Yellow River, the Mongols terrorized the narrow strip between the river and the Alashan Desert. Chinggis' strategy was to make for the Tangut capital of Xiongxing, to force Xiangxiong to recommence tribute. But the only route to Xiongxing was through the Hilan Mountains, protected by the fortress of Kei Min. There, the general Wei Ming, another army for Chinggis. In the narrow pass before Kei Min, Wei Ming defeated the Mongol vanguard, and noting the defeat of Kao Ling Huai, refused to come out onto the exposed plain to face the Mongols in open battle. For two months, Chinggis waited, trying to lure Wei Ming into the open. Finally, in early August, the Mongols packed up camp and appeared to retreat, their rearguard lagging behind. Wei Ming took the bait, chasing after the rearguard. But Wei Ming had fallen into Chinggis's trap, and a force hidden in the foothills struck the Tangut as they came into the plain. The false retreat worked, and now the rest of the Mongol horde fell upon the Tangut. Wei Ming was captured, and the fortress of Kei Min surrendered. The way was open for the Mongols to march through the Hilan Mountain. In Ningxia, the fertile land between the Hilan Mountains and the Yellow River, the Mongols ran amok, destroying crops, taking animals, and burning villages, making their way to the capital, Chongqing. By late August, they were outside the walls, but here their campaign slowed. Able to take minor towns, they lacked the siege experience for a great city like Chongqing. The extensive canals outside hampered Mongol efforts, and Xiangxiong directed a competent defense. By October, no progress had been made, but Chinggis saw the rains had started to flood the Yellow River. Seizing upon the idea, the Mongols built a dam, intending to flood the city. But in January 1210, the dam burst and flooded the Mongolian camp. Humiliated, the Mongols moved their camp further back, and Chongqing stood defiant. But looks were deceiving. Inside the city, the situation was desperate. The Tangut were broke, running out of food, and the Qin dynasty had refused the Tangut call for help. The Mongols could move their camp away from the floodwaters, but the stagnant water would lead to the spread of disease in the city when the temperature warmed. Xiongxing was saved only when Chinggis sent an emissary with terms, which Xiangxiong backed into a corner, accepted. Xiangxiong, to save his kingdom, became a vassal of the Mongols giving a daughter in marriage to Chinggis. The Tangut now had to deliver camels, falcons, textiles, among numerous other goods to the Mongols, who crossed back across the Gobi laden with treasures, slaves, and animals. The once proud Xixia had been humbled, and Xiang Song was murdered in 1211 by a nephew. Chinggis Khan, while resting in Mongolia, was visited by envoys of the Qin Emperor, Prince Shao of Huai who demanded his submission, perturbed by his victory over the Tangut. 
Chinggis Khan had finally been given his excuse to declare war on the hated Qin Empire.